God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And let us be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. With you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward will be with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. The word of the Lord.
A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. From Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, 
And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who had heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Kephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. On July 25, 1965, just 30 miles south of where we are gathered this morning, a scandal erupted in the city of Newport. At the Newport Folk, Newport Folk Festival, Bob Dylan went electric. Greatest folk singer and composer of his day, a global success in that genre by any measure, put down his acoustic guitar and picked up an electric one. <coughs> Jaws dropped. Drinks were spilled. Someone in the crowd was even heard to shout, Judas! <laughs> Dylan was now playing a whole different genre of music, rock and or roll. Would this stand? Would he backpedal and return to more sure terrain? If he kept this up, would anyone follow him? Today, that concert in Newport is seen as one of the seminal moments in modern music. But on that summer day, it was anyone's guess, and a big leap of faith into the unknown for Bob Dylan. At the same time as this watershed event was taking place in Newport, something much more important was taking place further south. The great civil rights leader, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., was beginning to focus his thoughts on more than civil rights. When preaching a sermon at New York's Riverside Church two years later, Dr. King reflected on his stirring of the soul, saying, over the past two years, I have moved to break the betrayal of my own silences and to speak from the burnings of my own heart as I have called for radical departure from the destruction of Vietnam. Many persons have questioned me about the wisdom of my path. At the heart of their concerns, this query has often loomed large and loud. Why are you speaking about the war, Dr. King? Why are you joining the voices of dissent? Peace and civil rights don't mix, they say. Aren't you hurting the cause of your people, they ask. Dr. King knew that many would applaud his opposition to the war, but he also knew that others would not, many of them supporters of his fight against racism and Jim Crow. King also jeopardized his support by, standing, by expanding his advocacy from civil rights for African Americans to advocacy for the poor of all races. In his final book, titled Where Are We Going?, published the year before his death in 1968, 
King calls for a universal basic income to lift Americans out of poverty, while having to refute accusations of being a communist. In fact, when King was murdered in Memphis, Tennessee in April of 68, he was organizing the Poor People's Campaign, specifically on that tragic day fighting not for civil rights, but economic justice for that city's sanitation workers. There were those who supported his struggle against legal segregation, but perhaps not a move towards economic measures to support equality. King was expanding his call to justice, even if it might mean the loss of prestige. And it was in the midst of that expanded mission that he lost his life. In the Gospel of John, which we heard from this morning, John the Baptist willingly, deliberately, sacrifices his own authority. Because doing so serves the gospel of Jesus Christ. The same justice work our own Latter-day Prophet Martin Luther King Jr. undertook two millennia later. Like Dr. King, John the Baptist would pay for this commitment with his life. Now make no mistake, before Jesus showed up on the scene, John the Baptist was a very popular prophet, if that's the right way to put it. The Gospel of Matthew tells us that, quote, the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan. John had his own disciples. In fact, the Mandeans of southern Iraq still follow him as their central prophet today. John was a prophetic success on his own. He didn't need to be Drew Bledsoe's to Jesus' Tom Brady. That's a very rare Patriots reference for me, so enjoy it. <laughs> but look at what John says in the presence of his own disciples when Jesus walks by. He says, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. After making that declaration, not surprisingly, Andrew and another of John's disciples leave John to follow Jesus. John must have known this might happen, but he exalts Jesus anyway, because he believes deeply that this is the path toward the kingdom of God. It is the way of righteousness, of justice, of truth, even if it's a path away from his own prestige and power. Rarely does any leader say, follow that guy instead, he's better than me. I think very highly of the rector of St. Luke's Church, East Greenwich. But don't go to church there. <laughs> Come here. But that's basically what John the Baptist does this morning. He tells his followers, the best advice I can give you is to follow Jesus. That may be the one thing that John and I have in common. That's the best advice I can give, too. I definitely do not share John's love for locusts. When John began his ministry, he could not have known that so many would turn up by the banks of the Jordan to hear him preach and receive his baptism. He took a leap of faith going to that river and wearing camel hair and preaching repentance for the forgiveness of sins. But his work was a smashing success. Most of us who find the realm of success want to stay in that realm. But where God is calling or where our hearts are calling us, may be different than earlier in our lives. Bob Dylan felt called to change his music and braved rejection to do it, and thank goodness he did. Otherwise, we would never have some of my favorite songs like Highway 61 Revisited and Subterranean Homesick Blues. Martin Luther King felt called by God after fighting against segregation for a decade to speak out as well against the war in Vietnam and economic injustice at home, and thank God he did. Was John the Baptist a success? That depends on what you mean by success. But if it means that you have played a role in increasing compassion, or justice, or mercy, or joy in this world, count that as a success. Two, two chapters later than the Gospel passage we heard today, John the Baptist speaks to his followers about Jesus, saying, He must increase, 
but I must decrease. For this reason, my joy has been fulfilled. John's joy is fulfilled because he has pointed people to Jesus, who taught and showed his followers the path of abundant life. Any role that we play in broadening that same path, even when it takes us into uncharted waters, is cause to claim success and to rejoice. We believe in one God. Let us pray for those who are in need, wherever they may be. We pray that the church may be servant to all, bringing the good news of salvation to the ends of the earth. God of light, we pray that world leaders may see themselves as servants for justice, raising up those crushed by poverty and restoring the survivors of violence. God of light, we pray that the spirit may be poured out on health care and social service professionals as they serve Christ who suffers in our brothers and sisters. God of light, we pray this morning for Brittany Carbone, Stephen Rochon, Harrison, the family and friends of Virginia Stewart, Aaron Hudeman, the family of Irene Hogan, Leah and Bob Nastasi, Gordon Martin, Gail Kenny, and Laura. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. God of light, as Martin Luther King prayed to you, Break the spell of that which blinds our minds. Give us broad visions, penetrating eyes, and the power of endurance, and help us to work with renewed vigor for a warless world. God of light, we pray that our beloved departed called in baptism to be saints may be gathered with those of every place and time who called on the name of the Lord Jesus. God of light, Hear our let us pray for our own needs and those of others, including those we name now, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask. Help us to ask only what accords with your will, and those good things which we dare not 
or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O oh Lord, my God, how excellent is your greatness. You are clothed with majesty and splendor. Let us pray. O oh glorious God, all your works proclaim your perfect beauty. Accept our offering of this set of green vestments and hangings, created and given by Sue Hall, in thanksgiving for the Grace Church community and grant that they may adorn this church and show forth your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You shall make holy garments for the glory and for beauty. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome to Grace Church. My name is Jonathan Hike. I'm the rector of the parish, so it's my joy and privilege to welcome you here this morning. If you are new to us, a special welcome. We're thrilled you're here. We hope you will be moved to, uh, to go through that door to my left into the pavilion for coffee hour following worship today. And also please feel encouraged to fill out one of the welcome cards you see in the pew in front of you and pass it in the collection plate as it goes by or hand it to me after the service. That's fine too. Um, I want to thank uh, Sue, is Sue here, Sue Hall. Sue Hall is over there. Sue, could you stand up? You may not be surprised to know this, but not every parish has a seamstress of Sue's quality in their midst. But we are so blessed. So, Sue, thank you so much for these beautiful vestments. Um, I want to lift up one announcement today, and that is Compline is this evening at 8 p.m., sung by the Women's Compline Choir. Uh, if you've not been to Compline, it's a beautiful candlelit service at 8 p.m. You're encouraged to attend, and you can just park. There'll be plenty of parking in our church parking lot, so don't, don't let parking stand in your way from coming back to church at 8 p.m. this evening. And now ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night before he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven,
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
using the prayer on page 13 of your bulletin, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the Spirit. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and those you love and pray for, now and forever. to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>